It's a pleasure to join you today at How the Light Gets In and to share my thoughts on what the future holds for India, a nation that now finds itself at a significant crossroads, where decisions are being made every single day that have great ramifications for her people, and where we are increasingly seeing a fundamental contestation between two very different ideas of India itself. Some of these momentous events are undoubtedly domestic in their origin, but there's a strong congruence between recent alarming developments in India and global trends, particularly the rise of a populist ethnocentric brand of nationalism across many societies. Last month, um, we celebrated the 73rd anniversary of India's independence. At midnight on August 15, 1947, independent India was born as Jawaharlal Nehru proclaimed a trust, a tryst with destiny, a moment which, but, which comes but rarely in history, when we pass from the old to the new, when an age ends and when the soul of a nation long suppressed finds utterance. With those words, he launched India on a remarkable experiment in governance. Remarkable because it was happening at all. India, Winston Churchill had once barked, is merely a geographical expression. It is no more a single country than the equator. Now, Churchill was rarely right about India, but it's true that no other country in the world embraces the extraordinary mixture of ethnic groups, the profusion of mutually incomprehensible languages, the varieties of topography and climate, the diversity of religions and cultural practices, and the range of levels of economic development that India does. What does the future of this remarkable land look like from the vantage point of 2020? Well, any truism about India can be immediately contradicted by another truism about India. It's often jokingly said that anything you can say about India, the opposite is also true. Our country's national motto, emblazoned on its governmental crest, is Satya Meva Jayate, truth alone triumphs. The question remains, however, whose truth? It's a question to which there are at least 1.3 billion answers if the last census hasn't undercounted us again. I've long argued that the singular thing about India is you, that you can only speak of it in the plural. There are, in the hackneyed phrase, many Indias. Everything exists in countless variants. There is no single standard, no fixed stereotype, no one way. This pluralism is acknowledged in the way India arranges its own affairs. All groups, faiths, tastes, ideologies survive and contend for their place in the sun. At a time when most developing countries opted for authoritarian models of government to promote nation building and to direct development, India chose to be a multi-party democracy. And despite many stresses and strains, a multi-party democracy, freewheeling, robustious, corrupt and inefficient perhaps, but nonetheless flourishing, India has remained. One result is that India strikes many as maddening, chaotic, divided and seemingly unpurposeful as it muddles its way into the third decade of the 21st century. Another, though, is that India is not just a country, it's an adventure, one in which all avenues are open and everything is possible. India, wrote the British historian E.P. Thompson, is perhaps the most important country for the future of the world. All the convergent influences of the world, he wrote, run through this society. There is not a thought that is being thought in the West or the East that is not active in some Indian mind. I'm glad a Brit said that and not an Indian. But the thoughts that are active today in Indian minds are a momentous change in the very basis of Indian nationhood. As I'm sure all of us recognize across the world, questions are being asked about the future of nationalism, the viability of the idea of the nation, the survival of the nation state. As identity-based ethnic nationalism reasserts itself in the third decade of the 21st century, can it afford to revert to the old models of the 20th, as the post-coronavirus world seems to be retreating behind protective and protectionist barriers. Are we witnessing a revival of nationalism and primordial identities? If so, will the characteristics of nationalism be reaffirmed or change, and in what way? In the case of India, can we cease to be the pluralistic civilization that I've long celebrated? Are there alternatives to our civic nationalism 
that seemed to represent the direction of our modern nation state. In India, the BJP government of Narendra Modi, animated by its fervor for the chauvinistic and distorted, even militarized version of Hinduism, now referred to as Hindutva, appears determined to promote its version of ethnic nationalism. In their project to redefine the understanding of nationalism, three principal themes have emerged that affect the future of India. To establish a shared myth of common Hindu identity for Indian nationhood, derived from a common ancestry, justified by rewriting history, promoting new national slogans, converting, for example, Bharat Mata Ki Jai, which is victory to Mother India, into some sort of quasi-religious slogan, introducing a religious test for citizenship, and building a big temple to the Lord Ram on the site of a destroyed mosque, and so on. Second, to entrench its conception of majoritarian nationalism through such devices as the signaling of soft bigotry against minorities, the use of mob violence and riots targeting Muslims, cow vigilantism, that is, assault on people usually of minority communities for allegedly endangering cows, the criminalization of triple talaq, a Muslim form of divorce, and the assault on the autonomy of Jammu and Kashmir, our principal Muslim majority state. And the third big theme is to secure a Hindu ethnic nationalism through effective centralization and top-down unitary rule by a strongman leader. The promotion of what I call Moditva, combination of Modi and Hindutva, a personality cult around the prime minister. The remaking of the national ethos through what I've dubbed the Modification of India. The subversion and hollowing out of India's institutions and their subordination to the ruling party's agenda, and the weakening of federalism and its practices by ensuring that financial resources and political clout shift irretrievably towards the BJP-led Hindi-speaking heartland of Northern India. The Constitution of India had established the shared norms on which self-government rests. In particular, the statutory equality of every citizen, irrespective of religion, region, or language. India's civic nationalism is both created by and reflected in its provisions. The constitution granted representation not to an Indian's predetermined identity, religion, or caste, but to each individual's expression of agency. The governments it creates are supposed to be committed to the welfare of the country's weakest citizens, including its poor, its lowest castes, its minorities. Though poverty, social discrimination, and caste tyranny still persist, the Constitution offers the victims protection and redress. Amid the myriad problems of India, it is constitutional democracy that has given Indians of every imaginable caste, creed, culture, and cause the chance to break free of their lot. This rests on a core assumption of civic nationalism, the development and strengthening of free institutions that ensure pluralism, protect diversity, and guarantee the integrity of the state. India's liberal and inclusive constitution has been the bedrock of our society, a guiding document that historically secured the inalienable rights of all Indians. It has not only consolidated and distilled the best of our democratic values, ideas, ideals for which our forefathers gave their lives at the height of our nationalist struggle, but has served to liberate the collective aspirations of our people. For 70 years, the constitution has served as a reminder that our country was always greater than the sum of our differences, and that our diversity of thought, expression, and ideology was and can be our greatest strength, not a weakness. The Constitution allowed Indians to create their individual political identity, and thus collectively to fashion the nation's destiny. But as Dr. Ambedkar, the architect of India's Constitution, presciently warned, a Constitution is only as good as those who work it. That is where, sadly, India seems today to be falling short of the ideals it enshrines. The alternative Hindu nationalist vision of the ruling BJP party has fundamentally threatened the assumptions of India's constitutional civic nationalism. Its re-election and return to power at the helm of government in 2019 and the breathtaking speed with which it has subsequently introduced and cleared far-reaching legislation such as the Right to Information Amendment Act to gut the independence of the Right to Information Commissioners, 
the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act to assume sweeping powers of arrest and detention, and the abrogation of Article 370 of the Constitution, which had guaranteed autonomy to the state of Jammu and Kashmir, and the Citizenship Amendment Act, which for the first time introduced a religious test for Indian citizenship by fast-tracking citizenship for refugees from neighboring countries, provided they're not Muslim. All of these pose a fundamental threat to the future of the freedoms that we have long taken for granted, every one of them grounded in the tenets of India's civic nationalism since our independence in 1947. Far more worrying, however, is the remarkable shift in pace in the ruling party's ambition from their first innings to their second. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.